The point of this tutorial will be to perform an analysis of a square tube crush. As you can see, only a quarter of a tube will be modeled due to symmetries. And the model will consist of a square tube, a rigid flat plate, as well as a square end plate fitted to the tube. And the square tube will be crushed against the flat plate and the response in terms of forces and stresses will be studied. This crushing is controlled by means of a prescribed displacement on the boundary of the green end plate. The first video starts off with the import of CAD geometries into LS Prepost, and then deals with some of the programs as meshing tools in order to create these parts. The second video will be about how to set up the LS Dyna simulation with the necessary keywords in LS Prepost. Thereafter, the third video concerns how to check that a model is sound and how to submit a job using LS Run. Lastly, the fourth video deals with post-processing of the results in LS Prepost. And without further ado, let's cut to the point of this video by moving over to LS Prepost. The first step will be to import a CAD geometry by going to File, Open, and then selecting either IGIS or Step File, depending on what format you have. We'll just go with the default settings for the import here. And now we see that we have successfully imported a quarter model of a square tube. Next, we'll create a mesh for the tube. We then go to Mesh and we choose the End Line Mesher tool. We select four edges that enclose our mesh area, like so. And then we'll adjust the number of elements along those edges, like so. Then all we need to do is just simply click Mesh and Accept. We do the same thing for the next area. And we make sure that the elements end up in the same part as before. We move on to the next area. And I will just adjust the number of elements along these two edges. Now, I'll assign these elements to a new part so that I can demonstrate a nice functionality to you by going to Element Tools and to the Move or Copy tool here. As the name implies, with this tool, you can move elements to belong to a different part and to do this, you simply select the elements you wish to move. So let's click them like that. And then you specify uh, the target that you wish to move them to. So in this case, let's move them to the already existing part of number one. And just click Apply and accept it. And we see that these elements now belong to the same part. I'll just mesh the rest of this area here in the same way as before using the end line mesher tool. The uh, end line mesher tool works well for creating even structured meshes where you're dealing with easily defined geometries, as in this case. But for the sake of demonstration, let's take a look at the Auto Mesher tool, which allows you to easily mesh more complicated geometries. You find the Auto Mesher tool up here. And uh, here at Mesh Mode, you can choose between an, having an even size mesh or creating a mesh with a variable element size. But let's go with the size option and use a size of 4.5 millimeters. And then we just select these two faces that we wish to mesh. And you can see that we've ended up with a few triangular elements. This is a free mesher and you will therefore likely end up with some triangular elements. However, in this case, it doesn't really matter, but I will adjust the number of elements along these edges to ensure connectivity with the rest of the mesh. You can change that by just clicking on it with the left mouse button.
And I might as well change these as, as well. And now we should see that we end up with just quad elements. I'll just turn off the geometry on here. And now we see that we have a full mesh of the tube. But now that we are done meshing it in this way, there is uh, another thing which we must check. And that is to check for duplicate nodes that have been created in the boundaries between areas. So we therefore go to Element Tools and we find it here. Simply select everything, show the duplicate nodes, and as you can see, they are there and we must merge them to get rid of them. And just accept and done. With the tube finished, we'll create a flat plate, which we can crush the tube against. We'll create a 2D plate by going to Mesh and using the Shape Measure tool. Here, we'll choose a four node shell. And we specify the coordinates of the plates as corners. But first, I'll show you where the origin in the model is, so things don't come off as too confusing. You can check this using the Measure tool here. So if we select coordinate, see that this corner of the tube here is located at negative 50 in the x direction, 0 in the y direction, and 0 in the z direction. And if I switch to measure distance between node to node, you can also see that the height of the tube here is 50 millimeters, which means that the origin in the model is located somewhere in this area here. So back to the shape measure tool, I'll just specify the coordinates here. And as you can see, you need to separate them using commas. So you see that I'm trying to create a uh, square plate with a side length of 100 millimeters here. Twenty elements in each direction seems fine. We can also give the uh, part a fitting name here. Now we create a third part that will be fitted to the end of the tube here. We again use the shape measure tool. Also give it a name here. You see that we get a preview of the plate here. We then click Accept and Done. Now, the plate is not of much use to us, just hanging about there. So we'll have to move it. First off, it needs to be rotated so that it is parallel with this side here of the tube. We therefore go to Element Tools and to the Transform tool here, where we choose Rotate. We then pick the elements by part is the easiest way. We also need to set the rotational axis as well as a point about which to rotate. So let's choose this one here. We'll rotate 90 degrees. Next, we rotate the part about the Y axis as well. Now, this tube is 210 millimeters long and I want this end plate to stick out a bit at the end of it. So we'll therefore translate it. We'll translate it in the Z direction, a distance of 
228 millimeters. The plate at the end here is supposed to cover the top of the tube as well. And luckily, there is a neat trick with this. We go back to the transform tool again, and we choose rotate. And if we select all of these elements here, and this will be a rotation about the Z axis. We'll pick the origin point there. Now you can see that there's an option down here for copying elements. And we check that one. And we said we want to have one copy. And we also want these copied elements to belong to the same part as the already existing ones, which we know is part number three. But we can also pick it with the left mouse button in this way. And if we then rotate this, we see that we have created elements at the top as well. Again, we can't forget to check for duplicate nodes.